Elevon and Life, welcome to Show Studio. Hello, thank you. <laughs> Big question to start with and a difficult question. What makes a great fashion photograph? Um, I think it's for everybody different. For me, it's something, uh, it's a picture which kind of haunts me and I want to go back to it and look at it over and over again. And, uh, you know, either because it tells me a story or it has like a, a movement or something which grabs me. Mm. It's interesting the idea of revisiting imagery and saying something that you want to go back to because I think that's one of the things that always strikes me with your pictures is, is they tell such a story and they and you kind of try and imagine scenarios that, that the model is in. Is that something that is very dear to you? It's very important to you that there's a story to each image? Yeah, I think um, it's important for me. It helps me to create my work because uh, when I have a story, I can direct the girl. I can give her an idea in the, in the head so she's not only just posing for the picture, but she actually plays a role like in a, almost like in a movie. Mm. And um, I think, you know, it's... But it's better for me. I think that, you know you stop at the image and you look at it for a while, and you just try to understand. And I think that's more intriguing. Mm. And what drives the story? D does it depend on the model? Will you meet a girl and then come up with the story, or do you have the story and then you find the girl who's right for it? How does it work? It's a little bit of both. It could be a girl, like you know, like for example, when I, you know, discovered Claudia Schiffer many years ago. <laughs> um, she really started to inspire me when I noticed that she looked like Brigitte Bardot. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all these images came up from the movies and, you know, I love those movies. And then we created the look on her and, um, and you know, it had like this impact, which, you know, we didn't really expect. But, um, you know, so she really inspired me because she reminded me of Brigitte Bardot. Then other times I see a movie and I look for a girl who will fit into the story. So it's a little bit of both. And what... How often is it sort of your fantasies and your stories, or how often is it other people's fantasies and other people's stories? Um, it's, I don't know, it depends, you know. Sometimes I just see a movie, or I see a, watch a lot of old movies, a lot yeah. of silent movies, and um, that really inspires me. But then I always give it my own twist, mm -hmm. you know. I, I don't really stick to the, the movie I've seen. It's just maybe the look or you know, location I'm looking for. But then I, I give it my own twist. And sometimes it's also just scenes I see in the street, you know, like um, somebody walking, with like a model walking with a baby carriage. I think, oh, that would be a fun story to do. Or, um, yeah, it depends, mm. it's all of it. We talked a bit about your approach and I want to talk about it later as well, but I'd like to talk about your kind of your life and how you came to work in photography and, and in fashion and and tell me I want to go right back and ask about you when you were sort of a very young girl when you were a child w were you creative as a child were you interested in visuals in fashion or anything like that um, well in Germany we have carnival <laughs> 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 which I was looking for all year long <laughs> <laughs> you know because it's just so much fun and I always love the dressing up it's funny I was talking to yesterday to friends who hated it I was like really I loved it so much it was so great you know I was always like dressing up of course like a princess and um, it was like the best day in my life and mm. then um, I mean in, when I was a child and then you know I was like love to play theatre, always, always think I had like a, was always creative, I love to write poems and uh, play theatre and you know like, like this and then later on was like when I was a teenager David Hamilton was really popular <laughs> so I was like imagining like being a David Hamilton model <laughs> and um, yeah, so it was very young in my life. I was kind of interested in fashion. I mean, not really fashion, but more imagery and, you know, mm. the dressing up, the um, theatrical side of it. Yeah, it's interesting, this idea of theatre and of sort of caricatures and transformation, because that seems to be something that inspired you as a child. And, and to me, that still underpins your work today. Would you say that's the case, this idea of, yeah, transformation and playing a character, playing a role? Yeah, and performance. I was... Um, also, you know, I've, uh, when I finished school, I, I played in the circus for a while. Mm. There was this great circus in, in Munich called Circus Roncalli. And I, I loved it so much. It was very poetic. And um, I went to, after the show, I went to the director, which was Andre Heller. He's a very famous um, Austrian writer and director. And said, oh, I love your circus. I would like to 
participate and like, he was like, oh, you look like a circus girl, you can start tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I did it only for some three months and I loved it so much and I still have lots of memories and it's always kind of try to build it into to my images, the performance, the, the theatrical, the fantasy, the glitter and all of that. Mm. Yeah. And tell me, it's interesting that you kind of went and you wanted to be in the circus for a while. What, what were your ambitions as a young person? Did you have ideas of what you wanted to do with your life? It, it seems kind of quite bohemian that you went and, and said, oh, I want to be in the circus. Or were you ambitious as a child or, or not? No, no, not so much. No, I was actually, I was um, not ambitious. I was really not that great in school. <laughs> And uh, it was like the end of the hippie time and uh, I, I lived in a hippie community and I wasn't really like working that much in school. I just like fin finished my exams and um, I wasn't really ambitious. I just wanted, it was just quite free. There was not this stress. I think you, young people have today, you know, like what am I going to do? What am I, what's my job going to be? Yeah. Well, we were quite free spirited. So we were just like living into the day and we were not really thinking of it so much. Mm. Tell me more about the hippie commune. That sounds <laughs> fantastic. What was that like? <laughs> yeah, well, I was in, living in the mountains in, in, in Bavaria mm. and I went to school there and, you know, I met like these friends and we decided to rent an old farmhouse and live together. And we were like five and like people came and, you know, left and we were playing music, cooked together and it was a fantastic time. Mm. Really have very good memories of it. And then after I went to Munich and then that, that, that was over and um, actually I wanted to study. I didn't really want to study, but <laughs> I thought, what else can I do? So the day I went, um, I set foot in the university, a casting person came up to me and asked me if for a model job. So I turned around <laughs> and never went back to university. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I started modeling and that's how I came into fashion. Mm. And tell me just a little bit more about your, about your upbringing, because I'm interested in them. Um, you know, women are so important to your work. You do obviously kind of shoot men, but you've said it before in interviews that, you know, women are what you enjoy photographing. And I'm interested, were there kind of strong women when you were growing up who inspired you? Were you interested in femininity or, or the women around you? Not so much, actually. Not, not specially. Mm. I was actually, um, I had friends, but no, I wasn't specially super interested. <laughs> More in boys. <laughs> <laughs> But this notion of, yeah, of romance, was that something that kind of, I, when you were a child, was that something that kind of played on your mind? I, I imagine kind of you talked about kind of fantasy and, and playing a character. Did you spend quite a lot of time imagining things when you were a child? Was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was always, I was always living in a fantasy world. I was always like dreaming and um, always imagining things and yeah. Mm. And because you grew up, if you don't mind me asking about it, you grew up in foster care, is that, is that right? And did, did, did they encourage you to be creative? No, not really. No, I think, um, no, I think it came later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you, happy coincidences. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And tell me more about that period where you got scouted to be a model, because that doesn't sound like something that perhaps you ever completely wanted to do and something you never particularly enjoyed from things you said in interviews before. Or, or was, it, was it quite great for, for it, a time? Well, at the moment it was great because, um, you know, I really was not so much into the idea of studying. So it just gave yeah. my, heart, my life just a whole new twist. Mm. And I was like, sure, why not, you know, I try it out and see how it goes. And then... Um, I was called by John Casablanca to come to Paris. So I packed my suitcase and took the train and never really went back. Mm. <laughs> so as then I stayed in Paris and started the modeling career there and I did it for a long time. Mm. And what, what were you like as a, as a woman at that time? Is there, I'm trying to understand are there similarities between the kind of women we see in your pictures and who you were or who you are or how has that changed? Do you put yourself in your pictures kind of in any way? Um, 
I'm more interested in the different personalities of the women. I don't really, I mean, it's of course, I think with every photographer, there's always a little bit of yourself in a picture. Yeah. But I'm not really looking for women who are like me more. I'm like more interested in all kind of different women who are like, have like strong personalities and, and uh, who am I interested by, but um, I'm, yeah, I'm looking more for this kind of woman. Mm. And did you feel like when you were modeling, you were allowed to kind of show your personality or is that maybe something that has contributed to why you want that in your photography? Because yeah, 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 I think, uh, you know, that's what I said in interviews before when mm. I was modeling, I wasn't really so happy because um, I think um, I was not, you know, you get judged very much for your outside and I yeah. feel often, you know, people don't really care for your um, personality and I wanted always to express myself in front of the camera and do like silly things and move and, you know, have fun. But people were like, no, 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 just sit still, look to the left, to the right. And, and um, that was kind of frustrating and bo not boring, but, you know, I didn't really enjoy it that much. Mm. I enjoyed the traveling and the... The meeting lots of people and like great photographers like I worked with Helmut Newton and Guy Bourdin and mm. they influenced me a lot in my work and um, that was a great part of it but like really the morning part wasn't really my favorite mm. sometimes I had fun but and how did you respond to the clothes to the fashion was that something that started to engage you being able to kind of wear these amazing outfits and try them on and uh, yeah, yeah, of course, that was great. That was great. That was like always like really um, a big part of the fun. But um, yeah, and the makeup at the time, sometimes we did our makeup ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, modeling <laughs> then must be very different. That was very different, you know. We didn't have a hairdresser. I mean, often we had, but often we didn't have. So we had to do uh, our own hair and makeup. And I remember I worked uh, uh, like for a lot with Guy Bourdin and um, and I kind of kept that makeup <laughs> during the rest of my modeling career. And even today, a little bit, <laughs> people are like, no, the cheeks are way too pink. And I was like, but that's the way I like it. You, know? <laughs> you mentioned Guy Bourdin and also you mentioned Helmut Leighton. And tell me a bit about, about any particular shoots that you remember that, that have kind of motivated you and inspired you in your work. Do you have particular kind of, it could be anything from kind of how they conducted themselves on the shoot to the way the lighting was to any of the posing, like any particular moments that have influenced you. With this photographers or in general? In general, I suppose, yeah. yeah. With those photographers or anyone you worked with. Yeah. Well, Guy Bourdin, I mean, it was really like uh, the, the photographer I really wanted to work with the most at the time. He was like so um, hyped at the time. And I just loved his pictures and still love them. And uh, so it was really exciting to work with him and I remember we were sitting in this tiny little studio maybe half the size of this one <laughs> <laughs> freezing cold and we were like all day long there and um, then he we, we started taking the pictures like at 10 o'clock at night <laughs> it's like um, so he was like oh she's a little bit sleepy let's put some wind on her and he put like this ice cold wind on me and I remember I was like standing up on the bed I was like <laughs> like totally like not remembering what I was doing because I was like totally uh, you know, freaked out. So it was kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, but very, but very, very nice person and very, um, very twisted also, mm, mm. which you don't notice when you model. It's always when you see the picture, like, oh, I didn't see that little elephant <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> standing there. So that was really a great experience. And I also worked a lot with uh, Tuscany. Mm. Olivier Toscani at the time and that was very funny because he, he had like lots of movement and lots of jumping and always like really lots of people also working together you know that was great mm. I liked that a lot that was good experiences and tell me what you, the time you spent modeling what's been the biggest impact on how you operate as a photographer was it just the experience of being a model and understanding things like how you weren't encouraged to kind of express yourself or was it kind of particular styles and aesthetics of photographers that kind of made you want to try certain things? Or was it a bit of both? But to be honest, the uh, photography um, came to me much later. I wasn't really thinking of doing photography when I was a model. I was just mm -hmm. like, you know, when you're a model, somehow you're like so into this process that you can't really think of anything else, you know, it's like you kind of suck into this system. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually, um, started to be a photographer because my, my boyfriend, boyfriend gave me a camera yeah. 
and um, and um, you know that's when I started to be interested in photography. Mm. Not really before. I wasn't really thinking about it. Mm. I mean, I had a little snapshot camera. I did like pictures on trips, you know, of, like whatever. But uh, I wasn't really interested in in photography. It's only when I got the camera, and also um, he had my boyfriend. He had he was a photographer, and we yeah. lived together. He had taught me how to develop pictures. And as he took pictures, <laughs> it's very narcissistic. As he took pictures of me, and he only uh, on, he developed one, and I wanted to see all the other 35. <laughs> 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 he taught me how to print. That's <laughs> actually my first step into photography. So I printed some of my own pictures. I started to retouch and do this and that, <laughs> and then my holiday pictures. And that's actually how I my first steps towards photography. And then he bought, gave me the camera, and he explained me the plus, the circle, and the minus. When the circle lights up, you shoot, mm -hmm. and um, then I started to shoot my um, to photo of my my model friends mm -hmm. uh, on a trip to Kenya, and I did reportage in an um, uh, African village of the, the kids and the women, and and um, when I came back with the pictures, like people were like. Um, Oh, <laughs> these are quite nice. <laughs> Did you take them? And I was like surprised myself. Yeah. And that was kind of the beginning of it. <laughs> it seems from how you describe your career, and it seems like a lot of things have happened. You make it sound like a lot of things have happened to you by accident. But I'm interested. Would you say that you are quite a driven person, or do you do you put your career down to luck? It, it doesn't seem like. No, I think my I think the luck was that I found it. You know, I think yeah. many lots of people have uh, talents and will never find it, ever. Yeah. But the luck was that I found it, mm. and then you know, I mean, uh, I just started to be very passionate about it, and I started to work and like you know, like work day and night. I was like crazy in the lab, like developing all my pictures and. And you know, I think it's not luck. It's uh, for just like also to do a lot of work, and then you know, develop your style and and to you know, take experience. Mm. It does sound slightly like you were restless as a model. Like you felt in some ways like slightly unfulfilled. You know, you couldn't give your input to a photograph. Do you think that's partly what what sparked your boyfriend giving you the camera? Do you think he sensed that in you? Yeah, I think so. You know, I was I did modeling for ten years, and I was really like. Uh, um, over it, <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, I think that's what what's the idea. You know, he felt like you know maybe he felt like I like I had a, um, a talent for it, or um, and that's why he, had, he gave me the the camera. Mm. And then I I still was modeling. I was on shoots, and I told photographers, oh, I think the light would be better over there. <laughs> and they were like, mm, maybe we don't book you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the end of my modeling career. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but it was better. Yeah. You know, I much more was much more happy on the other side, and and um, it was great because I was, you know, I had like my friends in in Paris. They had this magazine called Jill, mm. and I started. I had at first like like after two weeks, I had six pages of the reportage pictures I did in Kenya published in there. It's interesting. It seems like people responded very quickly to your imagery and said, and you know, you said you were quite surprised that they thought it was good and, and beautiful. Do you remember the first picture that you took that you felt was good? Was there a point where you looked at your pictures and you thought, actually, I really like this. This is this is my aesthetic. This is what I want to take. Um, yeah. Well, you know, as I say, I come from reportage, like, yeah. and I remember the first picture of this uh, series. I remember it very well. It was out of focus. <laughs> It was a man like pulling a push car in the street, and he was like sweating and like, and it had like this kind of out, out of focus uh, quality, which I really like. Like you feel the the movement, and um, it's a lot of energy. And I really that was my favorite picture at the time, and mm. I was like, wow. <laughs> and then I got really into it. And even now, you know, I, I love the movement and the um, the spontaneousness and the energy in pictures. And I always get drawn to an out of focus one <laughs> if there is one in the whole lot. <laughs> like, oh, I love this! One. Oh, out of focus again. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me about about kind of your career trajectory because when you, you mentioned you kind of started in reportage and a lot of people, a lot of profiles on you, they talk about that kind of 1989 guest campaign that you did with Claudia Schiffer as kind of a breakthrough moment. Did it feel like a breakthrough moment at the time, or 
Did it already feel like you were kind of doing quite well? Well, I was already like like Catherine Hamnet. She yeah. called me like uh, she saw my first uh, uh, fashion story in Jill magazine. And that's like I had my camera since like two months, and she called me to do a campaign. So that was like amazing. <laughs> that was really great. Did she tell you what she liked about your work? Yeah, I think she liked the reportage, um, the reportage feeling, mm -hmm. and, and sexy girl, but not like posing, but yeah. not more kind of she happens to be in the street and it's like a stolen moment a little bit, and I think she liked that. Mm. It's interesting. Just then you said stolen moment, and it's something I was going to ask later, but I think there definitely is this kind of quality to your work where when you're the viewer you're not quite sure you always feel like you're you're a voyeur like your perhaps shouldn't be there but you are and you can see something that maybe you shouldn't have seen is that something that's quite important that sense of I guess maybe it's intimacy yeah but it's quite intriguing you mm. know a picture like this you get more drawn in than when somebody is posing towards you I think when you like when the kind of voyeuristic thing I think quite more it's kind of more exciting in mm. a way mm. and when you're working like that how do you balance because I think your work is about kind of showing women in, an, in a sexual way. And how do you balance empowering someone with, I guess, what's the difference between empowering and objectifying? Well, I'm always really respectful with women. And, um, you know, it's always like um, a play, you know, between her and the camera. And um, I think um, I always try to empower them. You know, I always try mm. to... I always pick pictures in the edit also, you know, which are respectful, when she looks beautiful, which mm. looks gorgeous, and but I know she will like herself. Mm. And what, why, I think you are known for doing very, very sensual imagery, and why, why is that something that you kind of gravitated towards? Well, I do all kind of imagery. Mm. It's not only, but, um, you know, like, um, I think it's exciting, you know, to see a beautiful woman and kind of encourage her to show her sensuality and uh, I just love love pictures like this. Mm. And you said before that you, I, I thought it was, it was quite funny, you said that you can always tell if a photograph's been taken by a man or a woman. How, how do you know? Well, I was like, I'm not, not always, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, there's just a little bit something else happening. It's just like a little bit more, a little, maybe a little more sensitive, a little bit more of a story, the girl behaves different. You kind of feel it. Mm. Man is more like technical and uh, the, the sexiness is more like towards the camera and it's, um, yeah, it's also more like the technique is more important somehow. Mm. Does photography ever feel like a bit of a man's world? Because there's you know, so many, particularly in fashion, you know, the big, big sort of photographers, all of your peers, that they are mostly male. Is that ever difficult? I don't think so much anymore. I can mm. think of lots of women photographers. I think when I, when I started, maybe it was more, more so. But now I think the world is open to everybody. Mm. If you you know if you have something to say, if you have something to show, if you have a style, or or you know, mm. if you know the right person. <laughs> <laughs> Were people supportive of you though when you started? Because I imagine now, if a model tried to become a photographer, I think. We live in a society where people are very keen to put people in boxes and I imagine if a model was like, oh, I, w I want to start taking pictures, people perhaps would, they'd be a bit disparaging. Did you ever have that kind of attitude or were, were people quite, did they embrace it? Yeah, well, I, when I was, uh, when I started, like, so some people were like, really, Ellen, a model? She's doing pictures? Like, you know, people really have the idea of you're a model, you're stupid. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's true. But I think now, I'm, I don't know, I have the feeling it's more easy. Mm. Because um, you know you have much. It's easier. The technique is easier, and you have uh, much more possibilities. I think. I think people have more chances now. Mm. So many magazines. I mean, each time I open a magazine, I see like five new names. You know, I think it's probably easier now. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting that you talk about that and how many magazines there are and how kind of big fashion has become. I'm interested, what are the biggest differences you've noticed in the industry from kind of when you started to now? Is it, is it just the pace of it? The pace is very fast and everything is like bigger, the productions are bigger. I remember when I started, I had a little metal box with one camera. I didn't even have an assistant. <laughs> and I had an assistant and now, you know, on the shoots, like even I'm like always like, I don't like big production. I like small teams because I like to shoot quite intimate. But there's always like 20 people. It's like huge now, everything, you know. So there's much more people involved and um, 
uh, you know, also clients kind of, it's also, you know, now you do the making of, mm -hmm. then the making of of the making of, yeah. <laughs> and the pictures and all, it's like, all like became like, you know, very much bigger and more, you know, but also it's kind of exciting too. I mm. mean, I love the, actually the making of films mm. because the way I do them, it's not really the making of, you don't really see the hair and makeup people, but I try to create a little story even in the making of films. So, mm. and um, yeah, in that sense it changed a lot. Mm. I interviewed Glenn Lutchard recently and he said that, you know, the, the way the industry oper operates now for a lot of the reasons you, and kind of the elements you just talked about, things like the big productions and big clients, he said that it wasn't conducive to taking the best pictures and it wasn't kind of conducive to real creativity. Do you, do you not agree with that? Um, no, no, not really, because I kind of, you know, kind of protect myself. I would like people qu quite away, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, um, I still always try to do my best and try, you know, to, I book people whom I feel very comfortable with and in my team and, I, th you know, I still always keep that niche for me where I can create and, and uh, have my freedom, mm. you know, but also sometimes you do jobs where it's less obvious, others, you know, it depends. Mm. That's interesting. It sounds like you're saying you've kind of tried to keep a little outside of it all. Is, is yeah. That, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't have like thousands of people standing around the computer or like I don't go straight away to the computer to, you know, like with digital photography, people yeah. tend to look at the computer straight away. I, I still like, you know, like just like to play and have fun with the models and, you know, like stay in this, on this side and nobody is allowed to look and interfere. Mm. <laughs> Sounds like a very intimate relationship. Like you, it seems like your photography rests a lot on that relationship between yourself and the model, and yeah, and getting that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the team, of course. You know, the stylist, the hair, makeup—they're also very important. But and you know, the whole idea and th that's very important. Mm. And um, you know, things got like people respect it, and they're not too close. <laughs> <laughs> Let's rewind to that to that guest campaign. I want to talk a bit more about it because I think it did kind of, it drew a lot of attention on you and your image making and it drew a lot of attention on Claudia Schiffer as a model and, and just tell me about the, the thought process behind those pictures and behind how you positioned her and how you sh showed her in those pictures. Do you remember what you were trying to say? I guess at the time you were just doing it so it's hard to kind of analyse yeah. it. But. Yeah, well, you know, as I said, I, I, I um, discovered Claudia and then I proposed her to guess. I started to get to do to, to guess. And actually, the first campaign I did with her was for Catherine Hamnet. Mm. And then I did the guest campaign, first one with Carrie Otis. And then, um, you know, I proposed Claudia and, um, you know, I loved her in that Brigitte Bardot look. Mm. And we went to Nashville and um, shot her in Nashville like a kind of a cool cowgirl. <laughs> and traveling road trip and um, Nashville singer, country singer, you know, I was <laughs> give my, 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 my girls or my models like a little theme, like a thing, like a personage to play. Mm. And um, Camilla Nickerson was a stylist at the time and the pictures came out and, you know, I must say when Claudia and me, we had like a really great, great uh, relation you know, when we shot, like, she turned into this little sexy kitten, like, so cute and still very, very fresh and also with a little bit of innocence, mm. which I always love about a woman and, um, funnily, <laughs> <laughs> and um, so when the pictures came out, it was such a big success. I mean, mm. people, like, I was surprised. I mean, I didn't expect it at all. Why, why were you surprised? I don't know, because... You never know, you know, some pi pi pictures, people like react to it, it, it touches them, others not at all. Mm. So these ones, they did and, you know, it was the beginning of my career and suddenly I got articles everywhere and people talked to me about it and Claudia, so it was, I mean, it was a fantastic moment, mm. but it came as a big surprise. Mm. And what, have you, have you tried to understand why people responded so well to it? 
Do you think it was just very different? What, what was it? That yeah, maybe at the time it kind of bring, brought the glamour back, you know, we made yeah. big hair and the big eyeliner and it had this movie image feeling and little reportage and, and also like sexy in a playful, cute way. And um, then the beauty of Claudia and um, I don't know, mm. I guess that's why. It was interesting, you kind of hinted at something there where you said, you know, oh, I told her a little story and I, and I wonder how, how do you kind of brief models? Like, just give me an idea of the kind of the setup of one of your shoots. When the model comes in, do you kind of, you know, there are great stories about, you know, when John Galliano does a show, he kind of tells all the girls a story. He's like, you're this, you're running there, you're doing this, you've escaped here. Is that kind of what you do on the shoot? Do you say like, this is who you are, this is what you're doing, this is your life? How, how does it work? Yeah, a little bit. It's a little bit like, you know, we like the theme of the story. Of course, we pick the theme of the story and then, uh, you know, the clothes are like coming in, in, in um, depending on the story, you know, and then I try, you know, I give them a, like, let's say you John Crawford or, <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> or Marilyn Monroe or who else and you're going to do this and, um, you know, so yeah, I, I totally tell them the story like this. Mm. And you, you say the word sexy a lot, and I wonder just what is kind of sexy to you? How do you define? I don't know. I think it's just a girl, you know, it's just like something um, like a girl is like positive in her, in her body and like oozes kind of this sensuality and, um, you know, looks attractive and beautiful and I don't know, it's also something in the eyes, you know, this little twinkle in the eye, mm. which I think is really important, like the little naughtiness. I think that's really what I like. And do you think about the viewer? Because I imagine some of your pictures, do you try and think about them appealing more to a woman than to a man? Because especially when the, the, very, the highly sensual imagery, you imagine that it would appeal more to a man than a woman. Is that something that you, that you think about? Or no, I don't really think about it. Mm. Not when I take the pictures, I, you know, it's really like I really try to create a feeling and, you know, it's not, it's more, you know, like more spontaneous and more or less, you know, I don't try to think, oh my God, who's going to see this, what they think, no. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's more, you know, we just play and do it, mm. I create and then, um, you know, we cannot think of anybody who's going to see it. Yeah, that's interesting that you don't... Because I, I, there's so much talk in fashion, at the, you know, particularly in the kind of last five years or so about kind of widening definitions of beauty and, and particularly about kind of blurring lines between genders. And is that something that's, that you think about? Do you, I guess in a way, do you ever want to avoid presenting women in a way that is kind of traditionally appealing to men? Or well, is that... Funnily enough, I think mo I have more women who like my pictures than men. Yeah. It's always women who come up to me and, and uh, say they love my pictures and, um, uh, you know, it's funny like this. You would think it's men, but actually the women really, I, I think they like, as you said, you know, they feel empowered by the pictures and they often ask me, to, you know, they would love to be photographed by me. And um, so I think it's a bit for, for both genders mm -hmm. and also gay men love it, <laughs> gay women, yeah. so it's like, I don't know, it's, if you like that style, I don't think it has really to do with genders. Mm. Isn't it, you said that style, and I was going to ask you later, but I was going to say, do you feel like you do have a, a style, and how, how would you define it? Because other people define it a lot for you, but how would you define it? Well, it's diff difficult for me to define, you know, because I do it, but... Um, I guess, you know, like there's something spontaneous about the pictures and has a little bit of a reportage feeling. It's quite glamorous mm. um, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like having the ability to, to shock people though and take different kinds of pictures? Because do you feel, I do feel every photographer they get to a stage where people feel like they know their aesthetic and they're like, oh, you know, he does this, she does that. Is that ever frustrating? Was that hard for you? when people came to think that you were kind of good at one thing and they'd book you for those kind of jobs, but perhaps for not other jobs and... Yeah, but then I do so many different things. Yeah. So, you know, I do like fashion, I do um, lots of celebrities, I do film, I, I shoot uh, 
men, I shot footballers, I did a book on the German football team. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think people can really say she only does the same thing. It's like yeah. very broad. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't get bored. And mm. maybe people only know a certain style of photos from me yeah, because they look maybe only through fashion uh, magazine. But, yeah. you know, there is a lot of different things. Yeah. And also work on books. I have like, I did seven books and I'm just uh, preparing a new one. Yeah. It's interesting, you, I think it's really astute what you said about kind of people only engaging with a certain aspect of your work. And I think that must be particularly interesting with the internet because people will have rediscovered old work and they'll have seen your work. Yeah. People who've never seen it before and, and interacted with it in a new way. But I also think it kind of reposting of certain old imagery, it can kind of even more create a sense of like, this is the one thing someone does. Has it been quite strange watching your kind of old work appear on the internet and people interact with it? And you know, it feels really current. A lot of it, you know, it feels like yeah. it, could be it could have been taken yesterday, particularly yeah. some of that really early stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, I like it. I think it's fine. I mean, actually, I rediscover my own pictures. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh wow, I forgot about this one. It's great. And um, yeah, I mean, if people like it and they get in in influenced by it, it's fantastic. Mm. But also, you know, there's this new thing of Instagram now. Now lots of people come up and say, oh, I love your Instagram. I guess they don't even know my own pictures, my yeah. old pictures. So this is kind of a funny new thing. And it isn't strange. Which is seeing, happening. Yeah, it's, it's not strange seeing young people kind of, I guess, kind of, do you think they have a different understanding of it to how it was originally kind of created when they look at your work? Um, I don't know. Mm. I don't know if they think about it. <laughs> it's just interesting, isn't it, Billy? Because I look at some of your work and I imagine that it could be... It's kind of... It's not copied, I don't think, but it's so referenced. And I wonder if people are aware of the original references of that imagery. I think that happens a, a lot in, in photography. You see kind of a young photographer doing something and everyone kind of celebrates it and says it's very new. But actually... It's yeah. Ref yeah. Do, have you know, do you notice that happen? Yeah, but I mean, that was always the case, but mm. maybe more now because it's so easy to get to all these images. I mean, you go on, online, you find everything, everything that everybody does. So I think people reference maybe more and also the whole mood board thing, that was something which didn't exist before. Before we had our idea in the head and we were just going out and do it, you know, create it. Now you have to uh, have a mood board for everything. I mean, even even model agencies <laughs> want to see mood boards now. It's like, wow. And um, I think everybody, uh, you know, has this, puts those mood boards together, which is a great thing. I actually really like it. but. Um, then you know maybe they like instead of creating your own idea and yeah. you're like too much stuck to it and you try to recreate something which has been done um, already i think it's better to have your own ideas and create something in your head you know write a little story or make a little layout or like little drawings i think that's better mm -hmm. than to only take pictures and try to recreate them mm. it's, it's funny i was at a party the other day and the girl she had this picture on her phone and she was like and it was like this this flower and it covered the half of the face of the girl and she like took a flower and she was like boom <laughs> she just smashed the, the, the rough <laughs> flower on her face and like it was like this take the picture like this and i said no 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 you have to smell the flower <laughs> that's the picture <laughs> it was quite interesting to yeah. actually find the idea Mm. But that's when photographers, when, you know, they do something like Helmut Newton, there is an idea behind. Mm. And if you don't know the idea, it will never really be the same. Yeah. Do you think there are less ideas now? Because, as you said, you know, everything's so quick and budgets are so big. It's, it's hard to kind of, I guess it's, it's harder to be daring maybe than it was. Uh, in both sense. In some sense it's harder because like uh, the magazines is more like advertisers, you have to be, you cannot do this, you cannot do that, you cannot smoke anymore <laughs> in pictures, which is like the best accessory yeah. ever. <laughs> the cigarette always looks so cool. And um, But on the other hand there's so many independent magazines you can, you know, I think you see quite a lot of uh, daring stuff. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's like hard that often, you know, it's not so often that a picture really captures you, you know, like you're going like, wow, you know, that's mm. amazing. When you feel it comes from the stomach, you know, mm. it's like, um, that's like really special. Mm. And tell me, you said one thing in an in interview before, which I was really interested by, you said um, that the inter 
the internet will kind of water down photography because everyone is a photographer. Just, just tell me more about that. Yeah, I think uh, everybody is, I mean, you can do, take a fantastic picture with your iPhone, you, so you put a filter on it and it looks wonderful. So I think that's f for sure, you know, there's many, many more photographers and um, more imagery around, so people get less interested about it. I can feel it, you know, people are much more interested in their own pictures than actually looking at, you know, at, at uh, imagery on the in magazines or stuff. and. Also this whole like behind the scenes, yeah. you know, I see like like clients, they put like my pictures up and like the behind the scene picture next to it, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily taken by me. So I'm like, oh, then people think that's my picture, but it's not as good. So, you know, it's all a little bit dangerous. Mm. And it have, has, has kind of digital and the internet, has that directly affected your practice? Has it made you work in different ways? Uh, yeah, well, I was one of the last one to actually switch from yeah. film to digital, and um, I, I must say I, I like it. I mean, I still love my, my and I still also do um, use yeah. film, and I love my grainy, grainy black and white pictures, you know, when I make big prints, and it looks so great. But there is something about digital, once you start, it's very difficult to go back because it's just so you know, so easy and the editing process is so easy and um, you can do so many things. You have so many uh, possibilities. So I, I kind of like it a lot. Mm. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just a faster way of working and faster way of bringing your, your pictures out there. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's interesting when you said, said how fast it is because I think with your, your the way you take pictures is quite interesting because you said before that you kind of you take a lot of shots and a lot of them are kind of quite accidental and you're capturing different moments and is, do you still work like that? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I shoot quite quick. It's like almost like a film because yeah. I like my people to act. So, you know, I'm like really shooting fast or they really get into it. And then once they stand up, I keep shooting. <laughs> <laughs> and that's often the best pictures, you know. <laughs> when they, you know, that's like quite spontaneous. I'm quite quick with um, shooting. Yeah. So It's interesting you say you like them to act. It's kind of what we were talking about before. But a lot of fashion photography, the, the women, or the man, but often the women, they're quite passive. They're kind of being looked at and they're sitting and they're not often doing anything. And I think a lot of your imagery shows people doing things. and. Is that, is that something that's important to you, not just kind of having the model kind of just there as a, almost as like an object? Yeah, I don't, that's, my, that's what I like, you know, I like when something is happening. I mean, I also start off with the model maybe just sitting, but you know, mm. if she leans over and grabs a glass of water, suddenly I will like that job better mm. because it's a little bit slice of life, you know. Mm. It's not just her posing, but it's actually something happening and I'm more intrigued to this kind of imagery. Mm. It ties in, you said something and it kind of ties to it and I found it interesting. You said women are not just there to be admired, they're there to be enjoyed. I wonder, what, do you, what did you mean by that? I thought it was an interesting statement. Well, you know, it's just like, um, it's not, it means that don't just look at them, but actually find out about them, enjoy their personality, mm. enjoy the way they are, you know, I think that's what it means. It's not just like get stuck to the outside. Mm. Do you get frustrated with fashion photography that is quite flat? I don't get frustrated with it. It's, um, people love it, you know, so everybody has a different taste and people love like studio shoots, others like this. I think there's something for everybody. Mm. Mm. And tell me more about, the, I just want to get to the bottom of the kind of, because it's interesting when you, des you describe kind of shooting, you, when you describe kind of what sexy was, I, I thought a lot of the ways you described it kind of, could have been applied to a man, and I wonder why is it kind of women that you find them that that kind of relationship with? Why why is it that you prefer shooting women rather than rather than kind of trying to get that kind of sensuality and sexuality from a, from a man? I think it's more interesting, and I think you know when we when with women, I don't know they kind of tr trust me. Mm. Also, you know most of the women they know my pictures, and if they um, you know want to be photographed by me, that means also that they like them and then yeah. they do want to show, they women want to be sexy, they want to be, sh want to show their sensuality and um, it's, um, it's just fantastic, you know, when they open up to the camera and, you know, it's, it's, it's great mm. and, yeah. 
Do you think you get something sometimes that a male photographer couldn't? Um, yeah, something different. She would, male photographer would get something different. But it's, um, yeah, it's more like the female eye. Yeah. It's interesting just talking about that sense of kind of female eye and, and particularly this idea of women working together because it seems like you talk a lot about kind of how the model feels comfortable with you and interacts with you. And I think a lot of people, I notice it when people would write about your work is they, they seem to kind of celebrate that and think that it was something that was quite progressive for the industry. And I, I wonder, do you, do you feel like you've kind of broken down barriers or kind of, yeah, I guess, I guess kind of you know, made, it, made the industry more, more friendly towards women collaborating together, particularly within image making? Um, well, I hope I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, because also the fact that I was a model, I really feel how it is to, to be in, the, in front of the camera, you know, like how you can feel so awful. You're very yeah. vulnerable when you're in front of the camera. So, um, you know, it takes a little bit of psychology, psychology to kind of get a woman, you know, to, to feel comfortable and, um, you know, to, you know, play and open up and... Mm. You talk a lot about kind of empowering women. Would you say that you're a feminist? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a woman, how can I not be? <laughs> Good I'm a feminist, but I don't want to scare men away. You know, I'm not a feminist, like saying, I'm, I think I'm a feminist, but I think women should still like be sexy, sexy and, you know, not scare men away. Mm. When you say sexy, do you mean sexy for themselves or sexy to a man? For both. You yeah. know, I think it's great uh, if you want to dress up and put lipstick on and then have a dance in front of your mirror. And, uh, <laughs> you know, that can be the best, <laughs> best time. Yeah, what you do in your spare time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the champagne, the music. <laughs> That's fantastic too. I think it's important for both. It doesn't, or for your girlfriend or, you know, I think it's, it's important to feel great and, you know, that's what, that's, that's what life is about. Mm. And just tell me more about kind of other areas of your work, because a lot of, a lot of emphasis is, is placed on the kind of the fashion photography, but, but tell me about other things that you enjoy shooting. Are there, are there secret passions that we don't know about? Secret things you like taking pictures? You know, Nick Knight has his roses. Do you have things that you absolutely adore, adore chronicling? Um, well, I like roses too. <laughs> <laughs> I love, uh, I'm a passionate gardener, so I shoot my flowers too, but I don't know if people would be interested. They're not that great as <laughs> Nick Knight, <laughs> they're amazing. Um, yeah, no, I shoot all the time. I have my camera with me all the time, and I shoot like uh, everywhere I go. Mm. I, I take pictures, I see things everywhere. Mm. And I think it's, it's important to do the reportage photography. It keeps your eye alert. Yeah. And always, you always see things which other people don't see because they don't look for it. Yeah. So I think that's, um, that I love that. It sounds like photography has turned you into a kind of a workaholic. It was funny when you mentioned right at the start, you know, when your, your boyfriend of the time gave you the camera and you said, you know, straight away, I, it's all I wanted to do. You know, I was, I was printing pictures all the time. And do you think your work ethic came from discovering what you love doing? Yeah. But you know, the thing is, for me, it's not work. I love it. It's like my passion. So it's, that doesn't feel like work. I have like so much fun like going back and like t taking the picture and putting the crews together and then looking at them and, and um, you know, like choosing, editing. It's, it's fun. It's mm -hmm. like almost like, I don't want to say playing, but it's, you know, it's not like working. Do you think it's because you have that attitude that your pictures are often so kind of playful because it doesn't, there's not a lot of kind of, it doesn't feel like there's any kind of darkness to your work. A lot of fashion photography is kind of wistful and dark and, you know, melancholy and haunting and... Yeah. That doesn't seem to be something that interests you producing those kind of pictures. Yeah, I can do that too. It depends, you know, if I want to tell a dark movie, I will do dark pictures. It's yeah. more about the theme. But, um, yeah, I like... Um, the life. I like to capture life. I like to capture and make a stamp and say, look, 2015, that was what's happening. <laughs> Not just that the dresses they were wearing. No, that was what's happening. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what I like. Yeah, it's really interesting, not just the dresses they're wearing, because you correct me if I'm wrong, I get the impression, you know, it's not, it is the characters, not the clothes that drive you. You know, it doesn't seem like you are kind of obsessed with fashion or... You, I wonder, would you ever see a garment where you're like, I have to shoot that dress? 
Or is it always kind of, I want to shoot this girl? No, no, no. I love the dresses too. I mean, um, and, and I'm obsessed with shoes. <laughs> <laughs> But would they ever motivate you to do a shoot? Would you ever see a piece of clothing? You know, some photographers, they'll see a girl and it'll make them want to do a shoot, but they'll also see a couture dress or, a, you know, a gown. Yeah, no, when I go to the shows, and that's why I love to go to the shows, you know, when I go to, to uh, you know, like a show, like a beautiful, beautiful, actually almost all the shows I see, you know, I'm like, get so inspired, mm. you know, because, uh, it's, uh, you know, if it's a great designer like McQueen or Galliano or, you know, like people like, the dresses that tell you a story and I just like get so inspired and I really want to um, go out and shoot, shoot you ever, them. Yeah, of course. Do you ever wonder what your life would have been like if your, your boyfriend hadn't given you the camera? Do you think you would have stayed in modelling? What do you think you would have done? That's a funny question. Hmm, I don't know. I really don't know actually. No, but I'm sure something fun. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it. Have you, not? Have you never thought about that? That's interesting. No, 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 no. But thanks God, I found the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any big unfulfilled ambitions? Well, I'm always playing with the idea to actually do a movie and I have like plans, you know, I'm working on a script and I, I think I have to at least do one soon and see if that's really something which I will enjoy more than pictures. Mm. The thing about, about pictures is it's like so, um, not easy, but it's like instant. You get the people together, you can like plan something for in two days and you can get a crew together and do it. And then, you know, a week later it can come out in a magazine. The problem with the movie is it's like a long, long yeah. process. And, and um, I'm kind of an impatient person, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, movie but would that's take a, a lot of patience. Anyway, I think, I, I, you know, I'm ready for it. Yeah. And how do you, this is a funny question because obviously you're still very much kind of working and, and, and sort of, in, you know, enjoying shooting, but how do you hope your work, kind of in the great history of fashion photography, how do you hope your work would be seen and remembered? Um, well, I don't know. <laughs> the way it's out there and, you know, I'm like um, in books, you know, like I think books are really important to do because they last longer than a magazine mm. and uh, it's also what's more close to your heart you know the pictures you choose for a book I think that's really important and I hope people think oh my god I wish I would have been there I want to hang out with these people and uh, want to be there with them and you know it gives them a good inspiration so you want to you want your imagery to feel inclusive then yeah that's interesting because a lot of fashion photography isn't like that at all. It's very about being aspirational and about being kind of lofty, you know, trying to make people want a product. But it seems like yours is about trying to, yeah, almost it's more inviting in a way, would you say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, you know, like that people, yeah, as I said, you know, they would love to be there with them or like, do the same thing, <laughs> you know, they say oh, it looks like a fun party, let's do a party <laughs> like this, you know, let's create an atmosphere like this. I think that's, that's great. Mm. And um, if they want to have a print in their house, that's great too. <laughs> <laughs> Helen Bonema, thank you very much. All right, thank you. <laughs>